Okay, this is my ultra high density mango field where I have 310 trees on a little more than a half, half acre of land. The trees are, what I have is 10 rows with 31 trees per row at a spacing of 8 feet in row by 10 feet between row. The techniques I've used for this orchard is coming out of India where they have a project to train farmers with this technique in order to increase their production and quality of the mango for export purposes. What they found out when they planted this was that it increased the yieldage of the mango to as much to eight tons per acre with as much as 12 tons on the very best years. Global average for mango production, according to the FAO, is 3.5 tons per acre. So an increase to eight tons per acre is very significant. And what they was looking for, not only did they increase the production, but what they also, but it also increased the overall quality of the fruit. So they have been seeing as much as 80% of their fruit being export quality. I am running a drip line under the weed mat where I have half inch drip lines with emitters on every tree, one emitter per tree. However, I'm currently gonna switch out my irrigation in order to, uh, and put in half inch solid poly tubing with emitters already in every 18 inches. So right now I have poly tubing with one emitter per tree and soon I'm gonna switch them out with a line that has emitters every 18 inches because I'm sure that the trees have the roots have been able to fill in the gap and they would like water the benefit of having more emitters per tree is that if one emitter get, gets clogged the tree won't suffer because a lot of the time you don't realize the tree is suffering until it shows physical damage and then by then it takes time to recover. So the first year you plant the tree, you try to establish the main trunk where you want it. For me, I did it, I tried to do it waist high or a little bit below waist high. And you establish, you begin to establish your scaffold branches which for this tree I have three scaffold, uh, four scaffold branches. You want them spaced out. These have grown up to at about five feet. I top them again to begin to form the canopy, which is where I currently am. This year I work more on establishing the canopy and getting it to the nice shape that I want. Another important thing in the second year is getting the scaffold branches at the right angle so that, uh, you don't want them to be if uh, this is a keep mango and keep mangoes oh wait no nope, not a keep sorry this is a raposa but keep mangoes have a tendency of growing straight up this one back here that is pig rub marks on every big tree in the field has pig rub marks on them pigs need to be controlled or you're not going to harvest anything out here. 
is another example. So this tree is is just two years old, not even two years in just one, about 15 months in the ground, and it's already six feet tall. Where I will prune it back down to five feet and get that canopy thicker, ready for production next year. So back to establishing the canopy. Sometimes you get trees that wanna just grow straight up. And if you allow it to continue to just go straight up, then it's gonna get too tall in order for manage. So over the next over the course, it's hard to see. Of this year, I'm gonna have to try to bend these branches down to get a better angle you see you kind of want a 45 degree angle which that is a better angle than what it is going straight up and you can do this in a number of ways one of the, i think the way i'm going to do it just because we have so much of it is plastic bottle plastic water bottles i'll just tie those on <clears throat> I'll tie them onto the branch here and it'll weigh it down and I'll force it to do that. And I'll do that on every one of on this tree in order to get it at the angle I want. Create more space. You want it to be at a good angle. It cannot be too flat out or like or the fruit is going to bend down to the ground or if the tree gets overloaded with fruit it's going to have a tendency to break the branches you can see that tree again in the background with the pig rub marks all over it there's so much pigs in this field so first year plant establish the main trunk start to work on the scaffolding branches second year you should have the scaffolding badges established and now working on getting the canopy nice and full and ready to hold lots and lots of mango. This is another tree that needs to be bent out. It's getting growing too upright, but it doesn't have to go too much. This branch. Open it up. Every year. The trees will be kept at about seven or eight feet and then pruned back down to five, five and a half, six feet immediately after harvest. So not only did this technique increase the production and quality of mango, but the ultra high density plantation technique uh, also lessened the demand on labor. Because now all of the work is being done from the ground. Whereas a traditional orchard, the trees would be anywhere from 15 to 35 feet. In which case, pruning those fields would require sometimes climbing the trees or ladders or uh, power tools, chainsaws, pole saws. Things that increase expenses and the demand on labor, whereas <clears throat> the actual pruning is pretty intensive, but you don't need anything more than a pair of clippers and one person walking through the field. Yeah. Harvesting was also easier with the ultra high density mango plantation because those tall trees, you would often use long poles to harvest the fruit that would sometimes put blemishes on the fruit, lowering the quality. It would also, at times, knock down adjacent fruit. <coughs> on the big orchards, they have cherry pickers or mechanical lifts in order to facilitate harvesting. We had a windstorm back in January and all of the leaves that were new and not hardened off burned up pretty well in that storm. 
and it's recovered nicely since then. So, harvesting the tall trees hard, lowered the quality of fruit, and often ended up with some loss just by knocking them over. Whereas the harvesting for ultra high density plantation techniques is all done from the ground, all hand picked, picked properly in order to not get sap on them and blemish the fruit. And um, if you need to, you can bag all the fruit fairly easily. You can also observe the canopy of the fruit of the tree. Whereas on the traditional orchards where they had 30, 40 trees per acre, 50 trees per acre, and trees that are 30 feet tall, you know, inspection of the canopy is nearly impossible. So immediately from planting this field, I started to see some of the things that needed that could be improved upon in order to make it easier. And one was stakes. Every tree needs stakes in order to get them upright or to help bend branches when you need to, which which gets pretty costly or time consuming to go get them if you're fortunate enough to have something suitable to make for your own stakes. <clears throat> Which brought me to the open Tatura trellis system. The open Tatura trellis system is basically the same thing except now you're using trellises to support the trees. And this has increased the production even above the ultra high density plantation technique which has increased, which has increased production pretty significantly. Now this technique makes it so much easier to train the trees in the beginning years. Because now you can just tie them onto the wire. No need for stakes. Also, with the high density mango fields, as long as you establish the trees and the scaffold branches good, you should be fine as far as uh, the ability for the tree to keep the fruit off the ground or for the branches from breaking. But it is inevitable that branches will break and that fruit will be on the ground. And nobody wants the fruit to be on the ground. Back to the trellises. Now we can just train the trees up the line. You have the ability to bend the branches and support them how they need to be. There's no more need for stakes. There's no more need for water bottles or other devices used for setting the branches up in the right, the right angle that you want them. Now we just have the wires and the ability of the trellis to provide all the support that the tree will need in order to flourish. The open to tour trellis system is also excellent for other tropical fruits as well. Aside from mango, avocados, peaches, plums, pears, So that's my field. Half acre of ultra high density mango. 
There's another half acre of open Tatura trellis system for mango, which also has 300 trees on a little less than a half acre of land. So that's where we at. Boat techniques increase production of the mango far superior than the traditional method. And these methods are proven. This is not experimental. They have been having results in South Africa, India, Australia, New Zealand, South America has a few countries incorporating ultra high density techniques. This is not experimental. So this is a demonstration field. And next year, 2020, it's really gonna be the first year of production and should be increasing after that. So I hope you enjoyed touring my ultra high density mango plantation. This is a project being funded by Western SARE. SARE is a United States federal program, stands for Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Program. And it is an excellent <clears throat> grant opportunity for farmers and ranchers that are just not found hardly anywhere. And as long as you have an idea that can lead to a more sustainable way of farming, that they'll want to fund it and give you the, the opportunity as a farmer or rancher to do something that would probably be a little too risky and expensive to try on your own. So again, SARE grant, S-A-R-E, Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education. If you're a farmer and rancher, there's no reason why you shouldn't be considering applying for a SARE grant in order to improve your farm. Okay, aloha from Hawaii.